so welcome to lecture three part b now we're still in the measure phase and we're going to look at some uh, sample products and look at some quality measures we could use these uh, metrics to measure any quality level of a product or even a prescription of a metal plate here and the pen holder which we're using as um, the standard example throughout these lectures the reason we want standardized quality metrics is that we have a better understanding of our process so if we want to do some root cause analysis and try and figure out the source of the problem, then having standardized quality metrics allows us again to know where we are, allows us to set goals, know where we want to be, and then use the tools to get there and measure progress against your goals. So it is important to be able to do that. If you don't set the baseline and set the goals, then it's very difficult to get there. Also, if people are talking in terms of PPM or yield or roll throughput yield or DPMO, everybody's talking the same language. And then there is a lot of benchmark data out there for sigma levels where you actually can go and see what the sigma level of your process is and compare it against other facilities, maybe in your um, company. Or you can also co compare against uh, world class manufacturers, uh, world class hospitals and show and tell your customers. Now, let's look at what a uh, difference is between a defect and a defective. So some of the terminology of Six Sigma is important here. So a defect is anything that results in the product not meeting the expectations or requirements of your customer. So let's take, for example, a mobile phone. If you have a scratch on the mobile phone, that's a defect. Now, depending on where the scratch is, uh, if it's on the back of the phone, it maybe doesn't really matter. If it's on the um, cover or on the screen, uh, then it does matter. So that's why normally when you get a, a screen, it has a little plastic um, tear away piece on it. Uh, because it's so hard to keep those scratches off it. But basically, it means that the, the unit still works. The phone still works, but um, it does have a defect on it. Now, if it's defective, generally that would mean maybe the screen doesn't work or the keypad doesn't work. So the whole unit is said to be defective regardless of the number of defects it has. Now, where this is important is that the defects some some um, organizations, well, they don't count either defects or defectives, but they they count just the defectives, but it really are treating the unit as defective, whether there's one or 10 defects on it. But it's important to get down to that level of granularity. So the measures we're going to look at are um, these ones here. So in quality metrics in Six Sigma, we're going to look at uh, first pass yields. We're going to look at uh, percent defective, which is the inverse of first pass yields. We're going to look at uh, parts per million. Um, we won't be looking at capability analysis uh, in, in this phase. We might look at a later phase. Uh, we'll look at roll throughput yield and a DPMO. So you can see there's, there's lots of metrics there to choose between, and uh, they all have their own role. Understanding yield. So the first time yield is a common metric, and we can plot it here. So we can plot 94%, uh, 98 96 and so on. So we can use a run chart there. And so for each week, you could plot your yield. Ideally, you would maybe even do it by the hour, by the day. So it's the total number of units passed the test over the total number of units tested. So that's your first time yield. You multiply that by 100%. If we take our pen holder example here, let's uh, take a calculation. So let's say we uh, built 400 of them, or we tested 400 of them, and 396 of them passed. So our first time yield is 396 total number of units passed first time divided by total number of units tested 400 so our yield is 99 percent now most people would think that that's pretty good actually uh, six sigma doesn't consider 99 percent to be very good and the reason why 99 percent is no longer good we all think that you know that's an a that's as good as we could get if you got a mark and an exam on that that would be excellent but when you when you're collecting a lot of data a one percent error rate leads to a significant number of errors. And Lean and Six Sigma looks in detail at that final 1%. And you can see here is that if you were in a uh, phone, mobile phones, uh, and these, these are US stats, you know, 5,000 surgical mistakes a week in 99%, uh, 1 million credit cards with incorrect cardholder information. And that's considered 3.8 Sigma. So we'll talk about converting um, these defect levels to Sigma levels. but. You can see Six Sigma is 
Now, normally you wouldn't be saying if you thought you were 99, you were good enough for 99.5. So that's why we, we, we'll be talking in terms of uh, parts per million or DPMO. But actually, a Six Sigma process, only 3.4 credit cards would be bad per, per million credit cards that are out there. Another thing that people do with Yield is they, <clears throat> if we take our manufacturing process here, you can see that we run our product through the process. And let's just say at the end of the line, we check what the robotic placement pen yield is. So we put in 199, we're good, and we say our yield is 99%. But what we need to do is we need to take the yield at each of the individual steps. So at the lathe, the milling process, placing the thermometer, hygrometer, and so on. And if we take the yield at each of those, we can come up with a, the product of the yields, which is called the roll throughput yield. And it, it gives a, um, a much better understanding of what your true yield of your process is. So you multiply 0 0.97 by 0 0.96 by 0 0.98 by 0 0.98 by 0 0.99. So actually, the yield isn't just the yield at the end of the process here. Uh, the, the yield is the roll throughput yield is the product of the individual steps. And it, it really tells you what the, the true quality level is within your process. So in this case, 88.5%. Now, when we talk about yield, we talk how many were good, but we also want to look at maybe how many are bad. So the inverse of the first pass yield is a percent effective. And really, it's just 100 minus the first pass yield. If our yield is 90%, then the percent effective is 10%. And some companies use this metric to say, well, what's, what's our percent effective? And this rolls on into um, parts per million, where we're now moving from yield into... Um, in percentage terms into PPM in parts per million. Let's take percent effective is 100 minus the first pass yield. If we have a 99% yield as we talked before, we have 1% effective. Now 1% effective is 1%, 1 out of 100, which in decimal terms is 0 0.01. And if we want to convert that to PPM, so it's 1 out of 100 is bad, but in terms of a million, it's 10,000 out of a million. So in actual fact, a 99% yield is 10,000 PPM. A 99.5% yield is 5,000 ppm. So what we're saying is we're, we're building, of every million parts we build, 10,000 are bad. And a lot of companies are moving towards this metric. And if we look at the terms in the, of sigma, so we have what's called three sigma versus six sigma quality. Now this is a normal distribution curve. And we look at this in a little bit more detail later on, but it basically shows the distribution of product. So this will be our target here in the center, maybe in the case of the um, pen holder we're trying to get to 30 millimeter diameter uh, so we'll have some parts which are wider than that and some parts which are narrower than that less than that but some parts will fall outside the specification limits and in a six sigma process you have 1.7 plus 1.7 is 3.4 parts per million so that's what a six sigma process is. now very few uh, companies are operating at six sigma i mean the airline industry is probably an example that does but if we take a three sigma process you'd be generating as uh, over 66,000 defects, 33,400 on the lower end and 33,400 on the upper end. So that's the um, end of lecture three, part B, where we've looked at some metrics and um, we'll move on now and look at uh, part C, where we look at a little bit more detail on some of um, additional quality metrics such as DPMO.